So now, I want to make this exact, um, a rather similar discussion here for uh, the supply curve. So in that same phone market, we're still going to have the quantity of phones on our x-axis, the horizontal axis, and we're going to have the price of phones on our y-axis, the vertical axis, and the supply curve will be almost always upward sloping. Supply curve, which represents the seller, that would tell us the willingness and ability of the, the willingness and ability of the producer to sell the good. at a particular price. And what that has is then a function, and that function would look something like this, where supply, in this case of phones, is a function of price of phones, Costs and technology number of firms taxes and subsidies and the price expected in the future. So these are going to be the general um, components of this entire supply function here. These are the mo these are the points within it. Again, there's a difference between then the quantity supplied versus the supply, and it links back to the law of supply. What we see here for the, the law for the law of supply is that as the price goes up firms are willing to sell more. And as the price falls, firms don't want to sell as much. Now, similar to what we saw for the demand curve, Q subscript S represents the fact that the quantity supplied is changing. And same here that this is referring to the quantity supply. <coughs> the way that this would look is that along the supply curve, that as the price goes up, the quantity supplied increases. That's what that looks like. And over here, for the supply curve, that as the price falls, the quantity supplied decreases. So that's, again, quite different from the entire supply curve changing. These, as we're going to see again in number seven, pencast number seven, these are going to be what are called our movements along the curve rather than our shifts of the curve.